We are at Durham Pasta in Lynn, Massachusetts. Uh, so when did you open this? 2019, about six months before COVID struck. This and where you, this is like a, what would you call this? I, honestly, I don't know what it is. It's a little bit everything, I would say, because we get like a kind of a wholesale division where we do, uh, we manufacture fresh pasta, organic fresh pasta for different um, people in the North End and the city of Boston. We also have a restaurant, so we have to supply that restaurant yeah. in the North End. Um, that restaurant's La Familia Giorgio's. And then we got like this little retail store. When we originally first bought it, we didn't even think we were gonna open that up. But it was there, and we just wanted to basically supply our restaurant and other restaurants with fresh pasta and bread, because we needed a bread operation. Unfortunately, you know, um, I wish we had a bigger retail store yeah. now, because the retail store exploded so fast and so big, especially with COVID. I think that helped us a little bit with people, because then we did all prepared foods that really like kicked off like crazy. Yeah, you guys you know? are busy in here. Every time I come yeah. in, there's a good amount of customers. So, and then probably about a month ago, we started sandwiches and that's even crazier. <laughs> you did it smart too. Me. I saw you started the sandwiches and you started yeah. slow. That's it. It wasn't we only, like- I, We only do three to five sandwiches. That's smart yeah, though, because sometimes people do stuff for their menu yeah. and they add way too much too fast and you get overwhelmed. That's it. And we, you know, I mean, we're already a little overwhelmed, so still just getting used to it, but three to five sandwiches, I feel like you can't get killed. Yeah. And you hope that you, you hit everyone out of the park. Sometimes you have too big of a menu, you know, it's tough to hit all those areas correctly. But you started this because you originally just wanted like a commissary kind of thing. Correct, that's what right? it was. It was supposed to be a commissary. And then, like I said, we had a small little retail store and we said, oh, let's see what's gonna happen. Yeah. And I, I'm kind of more pessimistic when it comes to business wise. And uh, I was like, we'll be lucky if we get 10, 12 people. Me and my mother were like making sauces and, and things. We made like 12 marinara sauces. Yeah. They lasted 25 minutes. Wow. We opened the door, it was like 25 minutes, all the sauces were gone. I'm like, okay, well, we gotta ramp this up a little bit now. I ramped it up and now, you know, it just spent full steam ahead. How did people then. find out about it? Honestly, we're terrible at social media. I mean, it's like <laughs> maybe one of the worst to ever do it, if we're being honest. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so word of mouth. Word of mouth, I think, is kind of travel. People telling each other stuff. Those online face, Facebook groups, like yeah. those Lenny Eats, North Shore Eats stuff. People are always talking, you know, where to try the new places. And they love us. So, you know, I just think more word of mouth than anything. As you know, if you're in that business, yeah. we're terrible at social media. <laughs> I, would, I would say <laughs> terrible. terrible. Sometimes I would say terrible. Yeah, I, I would say yeah. I would say terrible. I've seen your posts. The posts are good. Yeah. People love you. You share people's posts all the yeah. time that share content that you, they like user generated content, which is the content that people come in and create from right. the products. Right, exactly. Um, but you, I think it starts with a good product. Yeah. Because you can have a, you can have amazing marketing, but if your product stinks, yeah, it's not they come, be they'll come in once. Yeah, and they might not come back. But you know that it's good when yeah. I mean, I've always said that something like this in this area, and we'll show, you know, why we're talking about. Yeah. Right now, like I'll overlay in the video yeah, what we're course. talking about, like the takeout meals, the pre-made meals. Like people are busy nowadays. Yeah. You got so much stuff to do, and like, as a married couple with kids, you know, like people have to work two jobs. Like they don't have time to cook like they yeah. used to. Or you bring the kids to sports, yeah. after school activities. It's like, exactly. okay, let me swing in here. You can get, you, now you can get sandwiches, you can get a pizza. Or, hey, I got chicken palm, I got the pasta, sauce, put together a meal pretty quick. Have you ever thought about selling pizza out of here? We only do the slices, I have thought about it. At one point in COVID, I was testing um, like, a, like a kind of a Detroit style, yeah. not Detroit style, like a square pizza. And I was gonna do just like a ghost kitchen type thing yeah because people were going crazy over the pizza kits that we were doing i was like well why don't we do that you know but i go back and forth so everything me i take forever to do things like this sandwich thing like we've been kind of um i don't even know the word to say but like teasing everybody for like maybe a year that we're gonna do it because i like to like take my time and do yeah. it Make like sure even this right. place people thought it was like a front for something because it <laughs> took us so long to open it like when do you open it well guys we've been open it's just been a commissary for 18 months, yeah. you know, because we bought this building maybe 2017. Oh, wow. Didn't open retail till 2019. You know what I mean? So we, so people like, we just had the stuff up there like, when is this place opening? What's going on here? People peeking in. Maybe the mystique like, is what made it. Yeah, maybe. And they're like, we got to try it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe that's the secret so, to market. That's what I think it is. Yeah. 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 So this is the spot where you open first. Correct. People would drive by. I remember driving by myself and, yeah. be, and just seeing like the Durham sign. And yeah. I was like, what's Durham? Yeah. Like I knew what it was, but like, what's it gonna be? What's it gonna be, exactly. Yeah. We used to have this uh, thing because so many people were asking, 
So we had uh, Game of Thrones was big back then. Yeah. So we had the Game of Thrones guy that said Durham is coming instead of like winter is coming. Yeah. Because so many people were like wondering what's going on. What does but, Durham stand for? So Durham is actually the flower that makes pasta pretty much. So, you know, semi Durham and We're in Lynn, by the way. Yeah, so I know. Can you hear it? Music going by. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> You're going to get demacked on the, on yeah. the, the music going by. Um, so Durham's basically the flower that makes pasta. And, you know, there was some other places that were using semolina. I originally wanted to do semolina, but there was other places that were using semolina, so I decided to do Durham. That so your basically. pasta is Durham? Yes, not we use both. Okay, good. Semolina for our extruded pasta, Durham for our, like, flat ravioli pasta. And yeah, you make all the soft. dough, all the pasta here? All pasta here. Yeah. And you freeze here. it and everything? Yep. Blast that... freeze it, and then goes into, a, like, a holding freezer. And then we ship it out where we need to go. And then we also do fresh as well. And what about the dough? I know you guys use like organic flour. Yes. So everything's organic in the place. For whatever we can source, you know. Some of the other stuff like I wish we could do, but no one does it is like the sliced meats. You can't get organic. Right. But if you import them correctly from Italy, you're in good shape. Um, but yeah, all the flour, all the dough, all the pizza dough, all organic. So that kind of separates us apart. You know, I think that we offer a competitive price yeah. at that organic thing when it's like three times the price of regular flour, you know, so. You guys own this whole building, right? Correct, we bought the building. We were just driving by one day. I think we were eating- Are you guys at from like, Lynn? No, we're from Revere. Okay. Yeah. Um, we were just driving by, I think we were eating at like, um, I don't know if we You got a great Boston the, accent, by the way, yeah, I love it. <laughs> I don't know if we were eating at like the old Red Rock or Mission on the Bay, whatever they call it now, we are eating over there. We drove by, we saw our for sale sign on it. Now, I actually went to school in Lynn. So I went to St. Mary's in Lynn for high school. Um, so I knew Meatland. This used to be Lynn Meatland. Everyone knew it. They had good subs and stuff like that. I'm like, wow, they're selling the building. So we, we went in, we looked at it. I was like, this would be perfect for a commissary. We were running out of room in the North End to make pasta. This would be perfect for a commissary. And I was like, we didn't really care about the retail store. So we broke down the wall and we kind of made it smaller there because they had a big retail portion we made it small made it all the specs that we think we needed and we had a little small little spot that's how we start here we like the location once we saw the retail store because it's it's close to everything yeah you know nahad's cutting through here marblehead's cutting through here swamp scott's cutting through here everyone's cutting through here you're you are a destination place but you're probably more like a community place right like the people who live in this community come here to get stuff of course yeah, yeah. and I always say, it doesn't matter. That if you look up anything on any Google and anywhere, you look up the best food in the world, they're gonna tell you it's Italian's number one at the list. Most popular food in the world's Italian. It doesn't matter who's eating it. They love Italian food. There you go. Guess what, and when I go out, I'm not eating Italian food. I'm probably <laughs> eating Mexican food yeah. or, something, or going to a steakhouse. So people like to eat different delicacies. That's the way I look at it. Today's podcast is also brought to you by Slice. Slicelife.com forward slash smart pizza. If you are an indie pizzeria who's looking to take advantage of technology, online ordering, all of that great stuff, and compete with those big brands, you got to check out Slice. Founded by a third-generation pizza person who grew up in his family's business and saw firsthand how hard it is in the challenges of being an independent pizzeria, he created Slice. And now this company's whole mission is to keep local businesses thriving, and it's been on the right track for a long time now. They handle everything like powering online ordering and building you a free website. Plus also stuff like customized marketing, which is about getting customers to order from you more frequently. And they give you all the data. They share all the data with you. So it makes them a true partner, but it's not a third party. People often mix up slice with Grubhub and Uber Eats. It's not one of those people because those third party apps don't give you the data. Slice gives you the data and they care about their customers and they want you to succeed because if you succeed, they succeed. It's a true partnership. If you want some more information on what they do, go to slicelife.com forward slash smart pizza and let them know you heard them on the Smart Pizza Marketing Podcast. Fresh pasta you guys make. Yeah, this is the fresh pasta right here. We make it every day. A um, couple different varieties. Try to keep like 12 to 15 at a time. How do you know how much you're going to sell? I mean, I guess it's like a pizzeria, right? Like after a little right. bit, you so, learn. So they, they do have a shelf life on them. They have like five to seven days of a shelf life. Really? You, you can probably get 10 to 14 days. We try to be safe with it. And then they can move it to their freezer. So you can move it to your freezer for up to six months. So a lot of people will come in and buy. I mean, we just now, I mean, obviously it was sometimes we'd be putting so much away, throwing so much away. Now we kind of in the groove of things, so we kind You've of learned you know, like what yeah, you, you yeah. learn. You you learn your paws, yeah. you know. 
So you kind of learn as time goes on. Is it a, a, like the people come in here and they know exactly what they want or do you have to like walk oh, around? Oh, we got people that we already know. They already stopped putting in the computer. They already know he's getting two chicken soups. He's oh, really? getting, you know, he's so you got get, regular customers. Oh yeah, hundred percent. That's great. And you guys sell other stuff too, right? Like what else do you sell? Yeah, so we even do like, you know, we do some prepared foods from Bianco's, some cheese, some meat, stuff like that. So you can make stuff, you know, even then we shred our own cheese if you guys want that. Some little stuff, you know, we could add some more stuff. Obviously the olive oils, you know, we got some organic tomatoes. We started jarring our own marinara sauce. Oh, did that's yours? Yes. We have a company that's actually doing it for us um, down the South Shore. Really? Yeah, I don't have enough. I mean, I got probably 1,200 square feet left of this place that, for dry storage that I might have to turn to production facility at some point. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, a good problem to have. Yes. So, <laughs> but right now we have to have someone, you know, bottle it for us. Yeah. But, yeah. And then you do prepared stuff too, right? Yeah, we do prepared meals. So, like, grab and go, perfect, lasagnas. I always think pots. every pizzeria should do this. I don't know why they don't. Because yeah. it's such a good idea and it's like something that you could sell especially if you already have a customer especially base especially if they're selling it they got the ovens why not make you can make get small lasagna pans cut them in three so you can do three at a time yeah see what happens for the day and you don't have to do it like on demand you just like like someone comes in orders it and come, they go see yeah. you later and guess what they might get you a pizza and then that's tomorrow's lunch you can come in you know yeah it's like an add-on right yeah you guys make the bread this is where we make the bread how many breads do you sell out a day here <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and this is just for sale out of the shop, or is it like you... No, no, no. So we supply a few restaurants. We actually supply a couple in the area as well, like sub rolls and stuff like really? that. Really? Yeah. Um, How did you get those accounts? Just... I, a lot of them just come in, and they're yeah. like, hey, can you supply us here? Because everybody, every... Marblehead, yeah. you know, Lynn has a few of them. The so. quality probably helps, too. I think a lot of pizza shops want a good quality yeah. sub roll. Maybe a good quality sub roll that not everybody else is using. Right, so uh, let's take Nightshade Noodle Bar, right? Yeah. They came to us and they wanted like a banh mi baguette. So she came in with like her recipe, we kind of worked together, we made her a banh mi baguette and she gets those, you know, a couple dozen every single day so oh, she wow. can make her sandwiches. Does so she come pick them up or do you deliver we them? We deliver them to her, yeah, but you know. Um, so we don't mind it, like it's not something that I could take on a whole bunch of accounts, especially with my sub going on now. We're kind of maxed out with this oven, so we would need a bigger oven and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, our process, it takes a long time. That's what people don't understand to make bread. Like to make good bread, it yeah. takes a long time. You make it, I can make you a bread in 25 minutes. I don't think it's gonna taste as good or as flavorful as with this is like three to four or five hours. You know what, what, I mean? what makes this so good? So basically what we have to do is we have to make a pre-ferment 24 hours before. Before You, you know all about pizza dough. You know that, you know, yeah. bigas, poolishes, all that stuff. That's essentially what we're doing. We're making a biga. So we make it, we mix in basically a 50-50 recipe of water to um, flour. We're letting that sit overnight for 24 hours. So that's gonna give you some flavor. It's almost similar to a sourdough flavor, just not as intense. And then we, once we mix it, it goes into these containers here, oh, wow. right? So now this is gonna get stretched and folded, stretched and folded, stretched and folded. Where'd you learn how to make bread? So we were making it in, in the restaurant for a while. I actually did a couple classes because my favorite thing in the world is hard bread. I like rustic bread. So is that like, like the ciabatta you make? Yeah. Yeah. So that that I think is one of the I'd say the biggest, you know, not to change subjects, one of the biggest um, brick walls we run into with the sandwiches is like, listen, you're only getting it on hard bread. You know, it, it is what it is. You know, my one of my favorite places in the world. I'm a Riviera kid. Is New Dale subs. Right? Yep. Soft roll though. That's fine. I love their subs. I'll still eat their subs. I prefer it on a hot roll. So make bread hot again, that's what I say. <laughs> that's how I like it. So I went and you did my research and just studied and studied and this is what we came up with, this Italian rustic ciabatta loaf. I love it too. I find, yeah. so I've done a lot of these videos yeah. and podcasts all over the country and I find, to me, the best pizza makers start by making bread. Okay, like, I can see I, that. I honestly yeah. think like the best pizza, like the best pizza you're ever gonna find if you go talk to the pizza maker, and I ask him like, how did you get started? He's like, oh, I made bread, and yeah. I like, was he was, was in a bakery. I was fascinated by making yeah. bread and like the yeah. best bread, and then that turned into pizza. Yeah, and it's always the case. It's never like, oh, I make pizza, and then I started to make bread. It's usually like the other way. The around. other way around. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, they probably just have extra dough, and then they're just fooling around, and then they you have time to perfect things with bakery because it's kind of a slow process. Exactly. Not that you're not busy the whole time, but it's a slow process. 
Like you, you said, always. you could make a bread in a couple minutes, or you could make a pizza dough in a couple minutes yeah. too, but it won't be good. Exactly. You gotta have that process in place. So our pizza dough, we, we're um, fermenting, cold fermenting, 48 to 72 hours. So like the restaurant's taking it for 72 hours getting cold fermented. Wow. Before we put it in our bags, it's 48 hours. How, how, does you, how do you get the dough from here to your restaurant? We got trucks that'll come and pick it up. The, so like in dough trays? Uh, yeah, dough trays. They just take the dough trays. So just like a regular kind of commissary. Same thing, yeah. Have you ever been to Anthony's place over there in Lynn? He, Anthony, you know Auto, Auto Pizza? Oh, yeah, yeah. 100%. Have you been to his facility? Yeah. In there? Yeah, oh yeah. I've been there a bunch of times. That's a pretty big facility. We did a video over there. That, that yeah. place is huge. Yeah. Oh, I know. I actually watched that video. It was a great video. Um, you know, off the record, we... Well, what do you think that has surprised you the most about opening this place? I think how fast the business grew to where it is now. I think that, again, I think COVID helped a little bit, but I would say that the most. And the insatiability of the customer, like you cannot, they just keep coming for more. And, you know, anything that we put out, I swear to God, I feel like I could sell anything here and they will come and get it. It's crazy. Or they'll at least try it. Yeah. So, you, and I'm not saying that like in a poor quality statement, I'm just saying they'll try anything. I could put anything on the menu. If I legitimately did make empanadas, they would try them. And I think they would like them. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. That was the most shocking thing in the world. I didn't think that we would pull business or we'd have as much business, pull business from other places. I don't want to say that that's what we're doing, but I was shocked with how fast it grew, you know, in a relatively short period of time that you'll ever want to be like a big company that sells your pasta across the country? I don't know. I know I go back and forth again. I keep going back to the sandwiches. I went to the sandwiches. I was going to do dry pasta. Yeah. I was putting that thing for a dry pasta machine, a bigger extruder machine, just going to ship pasta across the country more like COVID stuff, like near towards the end of COVID. But I don't know. That's the problem. So to me, I don't know. I think I, think I can open any one of my businesses and scale it up. So if I wanted to do another, uh, just like a sandwich place, I think I could scale that up. If I wanted to do just a retail place, I think I could scale that up. If I wanted to just do pasta, I think I could scale that up too. I think I could be successful in anything I do. I don't know what I want to do yet. Maybe something like a bigger store, like almost like Apache where they kind of do a little bit of everything. Yeah. Just on a bigger level. So this, you know? but like a huge, like a- Like a huge one. Like a yeah. couple thousand square feet. Right. So right now we got, technically we got 2,400 square feet in here. No, more. If you count the basement, 4,800 square feet. But if someone comes feet. in, it's like 200. It looks like, yeah, it looks like three. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Plus, we, so if I could have 5,000 square feet, a big square, one level, oh, we'd kill it. I'd put a coffee, gelato, I'd do the whole nine, everything. Because well, make be a gelato so easy. I w let me know if you do that, You can. I'll, I'll work for you. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we'll need definitely full-time marketing for sure. <laughs> Question, you said you're yes. terrible at social media, but you're doing social media. What, why, what, why do you say you're terrible at it? I think I'm terrible because I'm not consistent enough. I think that, I think I can take decent pitches or we can take decent pitches, do decent reels. But I think to me, someone that's good at social media can do that and do it consistently. So that's what I would say, that that's why we're terrible. We don't post enough. What holds you back from posting more? I don't know if it's laziness. I don't know if it's like sometimes you just want things to be perfect. It could be the pro procrastinator in me. I don't have a good answer. Yeah. You sound like a, you sound like a, not a, I wouldn't say procrastinator. You want it to be good. Like, a, yeah. like almost like a perfectionist. Say so, my father's the exact opposite way. Not that he doesn't want things to be good. He's more of a shoot first, yeah. ask questions Aim later. later. Yes, exactly. So like he's one that's just like bang, 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 yeah. bang, bang. I'm a little bit different than that. So like hey, I think that that my style aggravates him, and sometimes his style aggravates me. So maybe we balance each other out. So he's handling the North End place. I'm handling this place. But definitely social media. You know, we we, we even got interviews coming up with certain people that we you know, trying to get a social yeah. media manager to yeah. handle both yeah. spots, you know, because I think that's that would probably be the ideal thing. And then creatively, I yeah. can say, I want this done. Tell them what you idea, ideation yes. wise. Yeah. Yes. How is it so, working with your dad? I love it. So, yeah. Yeah. Some people like, you know, they, they grow resentment. Me, we, I, me and him will just bust each other's balls for lack of a better word. That's so, good. Yeah, we like it. So Sometimes working with family can be tough. Yes. So I think maybe that's why my brothers didn't want to be in the business. You know, I got two brothers. Maybe that's why they didn't want to be in the business. But, you know, I've been in it since birth, pretty much. We had a pizza place when I was, before I was born in the North End. 
Um, and that's all I've known. You know, my, one of my earliest memories, I'm mixing lasagna cheese with my mother. I'm probably two years old standing on a bucket. So that's you know, great. I, I, I was going to be an investment banker, I told myself at one point. Went to Bentley, went to business school. Did you really? Yeah, for like a cup of coffee, let's say. That's how long I was there for. Was it for me? So I, mean, I guess I'm here until I hit the lottery, I guess. Well, I mean, yeah. you're doing a good job, and it seems like yeah. it's growing, so that's a good yeah. sign. Yeah, so, I mean, knock on wood, yeah. I guess, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> your product is what the social media is. Like, you're, you're having people post for you. Yeah. Right. You know, so like, the user generator does help, of course, because it's like, let's... I, and I actually think it speaks more volumes, because everyone can tote their own product, but when you get other people that have no relation to you coming in and putting it up, and especially if they have somewhat of a following, and they're putting it on their page, it's like, well, that's good, and you're not even paying them. Now, there's some people you can pay, and they'll come in here, and they'll do what, say whatever yeah. you want them to say. Well, shit, I, I yeah. post all the time for you, and I'm, I, you don't Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I, mean, I like it so <laughs> much. I, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like yeah, it. It's so a good product. That's so. good, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, well, yeah, we're blessed in that way. That, like, you know, we got a following, and they ride or die for us. And that, that's all you really want in business is just people to, you know, be loyal. You could have... 10,000 people love your stuff, but they don't buy a t-shirt for you, or you could have 500 loyal people that buy you a t-shirt, I'd take the 500 all day long. Yep. If they spend their money with you, that means they, they rock with you. So, and that's, and that's in every business. It's in, you know, if you're a comedian, same thing. It doesn't matter. If you can transfer that into sales, it doesn't matter how many people it is, as long as they're like loyal to you, that's all that you can go for. So, and I think we have a pretty loyal following, so. Where can they go to find you? Where are, what's, where are you on Instagram? We're at Durham Pasta on all, on everything. At Durham Pasta. We even got a TikTok that's laying dorm, and I don't even know if we have the password for it. That's what I mean <laughs> when we're bad at social media. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the podcast. As always, we'll link everything up in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for the next episode. Maybe this one right here, because we think you're going to like it.